right, hello and welcome to another Expert Inside interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, joining you as usual from San Diego. And today I am delighted to be joined by Wanda Toro Torini, who is in Massachusetts on the other side of the country. How are you doing, Wanda? Hello, I'm very cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I did live in the East Coast for a while, you know, lived in the DC area, so I know what it's like at this time. But you year, escaped, but so it doesn't I, count. It doesn't count. <laughs> I know, I know. It, it doesn't really count. <laughs> and I could say, well, it was raining here yesterday, you know, so the weather wasn't that great. But... <laughs> that doesn't help, John. It doesn't help. <laughs> okay, I know. All right. Uh, good. Well, um, Wanda is a visionary inventor and problem solver and has been an entrepreneur for a long time. And one of the things that Wanda has done is invent catch, so catchwords.com. And this is what we're going to talk about today is how to boost the impact and the ROI of every appearance. Mm -hmm. So um, Wanda, to get, to get started here, maybe, maybe just give us the background on why you invented Catch and mm. how you invented it. Sure, sure. Um, it's a long winding story, so I'll try and tell the, the, the quickie version of it. But Catch is actually built on a platform called Ecofiles. Okay, so that is the actual technology 11 years ago, and actually more, it was in 2007 that I conceptualized it. Um, I was uh, I've been an entrepreneur since 2005, but I've always been kind of inventor, visionary type personality. So my problem, quote unquote, inherently is <laughs> when I see a pro an issue, my brain automatically goes, blah, 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 must solve this. This is horrible, right? <laughs> so I was at a very large medical conference for one of my other products. And um, at the end of the conference, they're breaking down all of the booths. And in addition to that, they were collecting all of the paper materials that that uh, were not picked up, brochures, mm -hmm. white papers, et cetera. And John, it was literally a human climbable mountain in the middle oh, of McCormick Place. If you've ever been to uh, the exhibit hall of McCormick Place in Chicago, it's huge, like a Javits mm -hmm. Center in New York, right? And it was very overwhelming, literally to the point there was a full-size dump truck that backed into the exhibit hall to wow. pick this up. And I thought, well, this must be a recycling initiative. And... Um, and I asked the driver and he said, no, it's just mm -hmm. cheaper to throw it out instead of sending it all back to the warehouse. And um, I had been in the prior to being an entrepreneur. Um, I have a doctorate in pharmacy. I've been in the pharmaceutical industry for a long time and I was in sales and marketing there. So mm -hmm. I was aware of the millions of dollars that we spent in not only producing these pieces, but distributing them. And I realized that we had no idea who picked up these pieces. We had no idea right. if it actually was red or if it went into the garbage. And that mm -hmm. was just like this, ah, oh, cannot compute, <laughs> this must, must solve this problem. Yeah. So it was that day in June of 2007 that I called the solution Ecofiles, merely mm. to say we need an eco-friendly way to enable people to receive this information, to distribute it. And by, by doing it in some sort of digital, digital fashion, we'll be able to measure it as well. And so over the the next two years, I evaluated many different solutions, whether it's applications, QR codes, near field technology, everything. And right. we landed on actually using texting because texting was ubiquitous. No matter what mm -hmm. phone you had, whether it was an old clamshell phone or a smartphone, yeah. mm -hmm. um, global US, everybody would text. And so we thought, mm -hmm. wow, wouldn't it be so easy if somebody would text a keyword and then they would be able to receive whatever that material was. So that was the genesis of our platform but unfortunately, back in 2009, when I presented, most of my clients were corporate. So when I presented it to my corporate clients, they were like, wow, this is amazing, but only teenagers text. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I was crushed. I mean, we, we were doing very well. So I was able to invest the profit into building the platform, but it was too early. I was too mm -hmm. much of a vi visionary mm -hmm. at that point. So I, I didn't get to use it. I shelved it. And then back in, then in 2011, I was running a consulting firm as a division of my, of my business. And I had to speak in front of live audiences. And in that arena, I was speaking in front of pharmaceutical executives right. and those people running those conferences knew that they, those were prime targets. So they charged us $10,000 to speak. Wow. Mm -hmm. So this is a sales opportunity. 
right? Because now I know if I speak, I will be perceived and understood as an expert. And I had to decide as an entrepreneur competing against PricewaterhouseCoopers, Deloitte and Touche, all of these big companies, can I, is it, am I going to get a good ROI if I pay $10,000 to speak? And so I said, wait a second, I could dust off eco files. Now it wasn't created for that, yeah. but I know that I, I give really good educational sessions. And usually I see people taking pictures of my damn slides. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, and yeah, I wish yeah, I yeah. knew who that person was. Right. And so I said, you know, I'm going to give it a try and I'll invite people to text to receive my slides. And that very first time, 25% of my audience texted. I got mm. 25, the email address of 25% of that audience. And I knew that they were interested in that topic. They were highly qualified leads. And my brain just like exploded because that was more leads than I had exhibiting in the past, like in the previous two or three years. Yeah, that's, that's, that, no, that's just saying that's fascinating. And it's so, it's so, it, it, it's so interesting because you know, we stick with these traditional models of doing things, like you said, like, you know, going to these events, setting up a booth, having all your materials, et cetera, et cetera. Mm -hmm. And, and, and there's never, let's face it, there's never really any ROI uh, done on it's it. It's just what you do, right? Because it's mm -hmm. kind of like, well, we don't measure it, but we know that yeah. generally by behavior, we pick up stuff, mm -hmm. but guess what? A lot of the stuff we all know that we pick up winds up, even if we were interested in the topic, it winds up in the garbage because it's inconvenient. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And even if you get the, even if you collect a bunch of business cards, um, you know, you can try emailing those people later. And so half of them won't even remember that they visited you. Exactly. And a business card does not mean that they were actually a prime target yeah. for you. It could, in most cases, it's just a relationship kind of activity, right? It's like, oh, hey, mm -hmm. oh, it would be great. Let's keep in touch yeah. and eh, whatever. So so unless you're very good at actually taking notes behind your business cards, right? To say, okay, mm -hmm. this is actually a prospect or whatever. You walk out with a lot of business cards and whatever, right? And and if you did speak um, prior to, uh, as one of my clients mm -hmm. say, BK before catch, mm -hmm. <laughs> as she would say, um, you you would witness people being inspired by your message, right? You could see that twinkle in their eye. You could see the activity of the of the note taking and the picture taking, and you invite people either to come and speak with you afterwards, or to email you, or to Facebook message you, or whatever. Mm -hmm. And um, most of those people don't do that. And it's yeah. there's an actual behavioral psychological law called the law of diminishing intent, which just means the longer we wait to do something, the lower the probability yeah. it is that we're going to do it. And that's what happens. And it's kryptonite. It's kryptonite. And it's very frustrating. And another one of my clients said, I felt like a one night stand. <laughs> She's like, yeah. you know, it's like, I get everybody's like, wow, you're amazing, whatever. And then I have no second dates. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> <laughs> right. So that was the genesis of 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 catch. Now, the reason why it's called catch words now is because even though the platform was eco files as speakers, we're not thinking about e being eco friendly. It didn't make sense mm -hmm. from a branding perspective. So although the platform was was eco files, I actually um I actually did a meditation to try and figure out what is the appropriate branding for what we want to achieve when we're trying to speak to an audience of ideal prospects. And literally in my meditation, the word K-E-T-C-H came up and I, I, I woke up from my meditation. And I was like, catch, catch words. You want to catch your ideal prospects. And yep. so, so that really is what catch words is. And it's a textable keyword. Um, that people can use. But what I learned when I used it that first time, 25% of my audience texted, right? Fantastic. But I'm a nerd and I had to analyze it and see, well, I clearly I could do better. <laughs> clearly, mm -hmm. right? <laughs> um, if, if I actually strategized. And so over the next couple of years, I tried to figure out what was the most appropriate way to verbalize to visualize right. the catch word um what is the transition in between my talk like there has to be a bridge between your talk and your catch word mm -hmm. otherwise yeah. it sounds like hey you know get a 10 percent discount by texting this word and that's not what this is right um so they're typically texting for content i i like to call it a value bomb and mm -hmm. so there's a lot of strategy in figuring out what that is and when i figured that out 
I was able to consistently get 76% of my audience texting every time I spoke and I happily paid $10,000 because I was getting more ROI, ROI out mm-hmm. of it than everybody else, right? And so this was benefiting my consulting firm. I built it to $4.2 million <laughs> and I'm like, woo, woo, woo. And then I realized like, actually I would love to do it for everybody else because I felt frustrated for those other speakers who I saw were intriguing the audience and losing out on that opportunity. And so I changed my model to, uh, it took me several years to do the pivot, but to really focus on catch and catch words and to supporting what I would say, those service-minded and Mm -hmm. impact-driven experts. You know, the experts, like if you find, like you really love speaking to the audience and knowing that you left them different. Yeah. at the end uh-huh. right and those are my people because at the then not only do we work on moving the audience but then we work on bridging them to this this anchor which i'm showing on the screen for those people mm-hmm. that that don't see it which is a a, a, a catchword right um so so that's so that's how it um how it works like what you're just showing um right now is that uh the, the words are very carefully chosen yeah and then yes. you know you text them you get a and, and you get a reaction exactly so in this case for example when i'm educating about lead generation and really trying to get mm-hmm. the most out of every appearance then i invite you and i invite you all listening if if you do do this if you if you actually commit to showing up and want to connect to your audience then you could text leads l e a d s to 411321 that's in the US and I'll tell you what you're gonna receive first and I'll give you an alternative if you're outside of the Mm -hmm. US, right? But the most important thing is I put together this guide on how to transform your talk into a lead generating machine. And what I did is is just kind of summarize some of those essential strategies that I realized really transformed that speaking engagement um, to not only serve the audience, you still want to serve the audience, but yeah. you still have to realize that you're there for a business objective. And, and I think as experts, we're often plagued with educating people to the extent to our detriment. Right? Mm-hmm. Then we're like, wait yeah. a second, right now, now <laughs> no, they think no. that they could do yeah. it. And I, I didn't mean that. <laughs> you know? Yeah, no, it's, it's, it's very, it's very true. And I think the other thing too is, um, the experts and and you know when you're giving speeches and that you kind of get so wrapped up in your content and looking at the reaction of the audience and everything and you get and people pat you on the back afterwards that you almost forget that you forget about or you're not you never were focused on the follow-up exactly exactly and and so um most definitely for those of you that are are intrigued and this resonates. I mean, clearly I wish I had more time to kind of talk about the mm-hmm. strategy and such, but I do invite you to text leads, L-E-A-D-S to 411321 and you'll get this guide. And then we'll be able to also send you some follow-up about how to master the physical physical and digital appearances. There, there are different nuances there. But if you're international, you could actually text to plus one nine zero nine seven four one one three two one. 741 one three two one that's plus one nine oh nine seven four one one three two one and you could text the word leads and in both cases if we're if you're not in our system it'll ask you for for your email address obviously and you'll receive the the pdf and 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 such but that's kind of like the the natural progression um of it and i just had a client literally she she was booked for a speaking engagement she was like oh my gosh i kind of need an emergency catch word right my the Mm -hmm. way we work is is it's an agency approach and I'm very heavy on the strategy because I, I saw the difference between 25 and 76%. Right. Yeah. But then I also realized, well, well, shit, the 25% was way better than what I had before. Right. So in those emergency cases, it's like, okay, if you know that you have really meaty slides or you have something already that other people have said, wow, this is a really valuable resource, then we could create a very quick turnaround catchword for you. And for her, um, even though I knew she could do much better, she literally captured 42% of her audience of this engagement that typically she would have spoken at and went away and hoped, hoped that people uh, got a hold of her. And it was just, it, it's very satisfying for me because right. it's total lo- lost opportunity and we don't realize, it. and I call them anonymous fans. Those anonymous yeah. fans in your audience who really like are like, wow, that was great. And then they like forget because life happens. 
Yeah, yeah, and 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 as you and as we've seen so many times in the past, like you know, you get a line of like people who want to talk to the speaker, or whatever, and then most of them give up and go away and all of that. And, uh, <laughs> you get the and, one chatty person like me, right, who's in the front uh, of the line. And everybody's <laughs> like. All right, I'm never going to be able to speak. To this. Yeah, yeah, and unfortunately, that one person has often gotten. It's not a prospect, nothing. It's like right. just a very, just a, just a nice person who wants to chat to you. Yeah, at least I'm self aware enough to be like, look, if I'm not your ideal prospect, I'm not going to take up your time. But it is true, and then you're watching, going, oh, come back, please. Yeah. You know? And and let's face it, what do we normally do? We put up a slide at the end. If you want to contact me, here's my contact information. And by that stage, like half the people are either leaving or they've gotten bored with photo uh, you know taking pictures of slides and uh, right and, yeah, exactly. and, and, and how, how many people actually have done it i literally don't think anybody in no. my bazillions of years presenting no. i don't think anybody has said i really liked your presentation i want no. Yeah. Yeah, no. yeah, yeah but what happens here is the purpose is your appearance should have that unique combination of, of educating but also serving your business objective and mm -hmm. should actually uh, develop an appetite, right? Actually get people kind of mm, 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 do stuff to say, hmm, I want more. And then what you're offering with your catch word is that thing, right? It's the natural progression. And it allows people in the appearance, they get to know and like you. And then in the delivery of additional expertise, they get to trust that you know what you're really talking about. And then that's, then once you have their email address, then you can um, ethically you know, nurture them and educate them along the way, but at least you have that, that touch point. And, and we work with our clients to, to actually monitor that process so that they don't destroy that relationship yeah. and like text them too much or, or, or whatever. And let literally a, across the entire platform, less than 2% of people actually opt out and unsubscribe, wow. which is because we help our clients continue to serve. And um, if it serves, your audience, then it's going to ultimately serve you better. Yeah, yeah, and obviously, obviously, the the second critical part of that is having the having really strong content to send and having some really good assets to actually to be able to send people. Yes, yes, and this is why I have maintained as an agency. So what we do is we have a whole strategy. I call it the vault. In the vault are all a bunch of strategy videos, worksheets, et cetera. And our high-end clients actually will get to work with me directly to work out that strategy to ultimately figure out not only what's the perfect messaging within any of their, their appearances, but what this value bomb is going to be, right? So in, in refining that, that's the difference between 25 and 76 percent you know audience re response and um or you know for for me and um so so that's why I, I spend the time on that now what's been interesting is of course 11 years ago i created this but probably in the past two maybe three years i've noticed people starting to use textable keywords right so mm -hmm. now like there are some marketing uh software that where you can kind of add a keyword and stuff like that but there's there's power in the strategy, right? The strategy enables you to wield the full power of the technology. And in turn, I've seen people use it where I felt it was a detriment. It was a very poor experience. Therefore, it looks very shoddy, not professional. And it actually kind of repels people because it's like, ugh, that was a bad experience, yeah. right? So, um, so for the people that say, oh yeah, I've seen that. Um, it's like, yeah, I, I was, at first I was mad, I must admit. I'm, I was like, ah, we've been doing this for 11 years. But then I'm like, actually, no, that just means that the market is finally ready. Yeah. And I was just a little ahead of ahead of the game, um, but I'm happy that the market is finally ready. And then if people wanna do it right, then they, they use a catch word. Yeah, because let's face it, I mean, just like email before it and, and probably in every other form of, of marketing or lead generation or whatever before that, um, uh, there's a small amount of people who do it well and a lot of people who do it badly and and yeah. I think that's unfortunately with text now that's going to we're starting to see that already that people just think oh wow this is fantastic so put mm -hmm. no thought or strategy behind it yes absolutely and are actually very selfish in their utilization of it right so now um there are like now my phone does have a spam box and a non-spam box um in in texting and it's kind of evolving mm. depending on what messaging software you use and um and it it will it will know if it's a spam box you don't get it 
right? Now, our open rates, for example, we we can tell because of the, the metrics. Now, in, in texting, you technically cannot tell. There's no way of knowing open rate on a text. Mm -hmm. If somebody yeah. tells you, well, 99% of my text, that's just from like from user experience testing. It's There's no metrics on that, right? So over time, you will not know if your text is not opened, right? But we know from the sense that we deliver a text plus an email and an attachment. And that's very different from us. Literally, the email has a little paper clip, mm -hmm. which prioritizes that in the recipient's mind, right? And our when somebody texts your catch word on average, our open rates are 150%, which means your subscribers will open that text an average of 1.5 times. Wow, that's right? amazing. So why? Because it's strategy, because we were thinking about serving them. They open it up on their phone and they're like, wow, that's really cool. Then when they're on their PC, they, they open it, right? So the strategy gets you that. I've had other clients when I, in the beginning, when I was working for just corporations and they're like, oh, you know, we don't, we don't want to dig into the strategy. Let's like, mm -hmm. we want to slap it on our exhibit, booth, yeah. for example, <laughs> right? 0% of people texted. This was uh, their audience was chiropractors. And mm -hmm. they're like, well, you see chiropractors don't text. I'm like, what are you talking about? Yeah, what they yeah, offered yeah. was totally selfish. Yeah, yeah. It's because uh, I, gu I guarantee you most uh, chiropractors are texting constantly, like with the appointment <laughs> updates and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. So it was a matter of saying, well, actually, what's wonderful is that the tool told you that what you're offering is not good enough. Right. But yeah. they didn't see it that way. They saw it as a failure of the technology. And right. But um, this was early on as well, when honestly, I wasn't as strong about no, you must do the strategy. Now, now for me, it's like if somebody uses a catch word, if somebody sees, oh, I'm texting something to 411321, mm -hmm. I want them to know that they could trust it because they went through this process. Because yeah. anybody that has a catch word actually is impact driven and, you know, and, and service minded and they're not going to yeah. waste your time. Yeah. Listen, that's, this is um, fantastic Wanda. So thank you for sharing this with people today. And I think it's really important because like I said, you don't want to make the same mistakes you made with email and that you don't want to think, Oh, text is really convenient. And I can just spam mm -hmm. the heck out of people. And let's face it, it, there's nothing more irritating than, than getting like spammy texts uh, yes. because text feels that much more personal in it's many so ways. It's so personal. Yeah. And actually there are a lot more rules around texting. So there is like with spamming, we've kind of been like, doo, 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 and, mm -hmm. and like the user themselves will ultimately like say, okay, I, I don't want it. But actually with texting, there are federal guidelines and your, your phone number can get shut down and then you will have no, op so all those people you have that lost the opportunity to communicate with them again, because you can't drop those people into another list and like reconnect with them. That's illegal. When people do that, it is illegal um, to do. And you don't want to be that guy or that girl, yeah. right? Hopefully not. <laughs> um, so, so we, I, you know, my background was the pharmaceutical industry. So inherently from the beginning, we were very, very compliance focused mm -hmm. and um, it's enabled us to really survive a lot of other systems where, um, when they were sharing a platform, if one person messed up, then everybody lost their their opportunity, right? So we're we're it's a gated process, but it's for your benefit ultimately because with a less than two percent unsubscribe rate, that means you know the subscribers are are saying like, yeah, we feel that this is valuable. And then we've had mm -hmm. even some like I say, the open rate average open rate is one hundred fifty percent. We've had some clients, especially in the healthcare arena, where their open rates were like over 600% because they were delivering something that was so valuable to a patient population, right? That the numbers showed that they were consuming it, they were sharing it over and over mm -hmm. again, right? And it was mind blowing for us, but then it allowed us to realize that there is a spectrum and that you can use the tool to actually assess that. Yeah, absolutely. Hey, listen, Wanda, this has been fantastic. And I, I know, really, thank really... You. Yeah, and I really, really encourage people to check out catchwords.com. That's uh, K-E-T-C-H-W-O-R-D-S.com. I really uh, encourage you to check it out because, as we just said a few moments ago, um, 
you can, you can easily mess this up and you can easily get too enthusiastic and carried away and do this, you know, start using text and all that without any strategy behind it. And it's not going to serve you well. So I would encourage you to check this out. All of Wanda's information will be below this video. But before we go, Wanda, any additional words to say about yourself and your business? Oh, no, I just I think hopefully everybody will understand that for us, mm -hmm. it's about the results. And we're very aware, I have a performance background, so I'm very much aware of, of the impact of the audience. And if you keep the audience in mind, how much you can really change things as a result of that. So I do encourage people to text leads, L-E-A-D-S, to 411321 um, to get that experience of what your audience can experience. And I look forward to helping you catch those anonymous fans. <laughs> yeah, excellent. Catch those anonymous fans. Okay, so make sure you text and uh, we'll and, and start to find out more about this. Like I said, I think it's really important that you do this right uh, first time around. Thank you. All right. It. Yeah, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. See you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Thank you.